Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Janadi Stolyarov II. I am the chairman of the United States Transhumanist Party and the chief executive of the Nevada Transhumanist Party. It has been an eventful day here at the Cyborg and Transhumanist Forum at the Nevada Legislature. This is the first time that the Transhumanist Party has had an official presence within a legislative forum and we've had a lot of people coming by asking questions about emerging technologies. I have some literature available here that I was able to compile on technologies ranging from life extension to artificial intelligence. I have works here by Dr. Aubrey de Grey, uh, Dr. Bill Andrews, Dr. Jose Cordero, Dr. Ben Goertzel, Jim Mellon, the uh, renowned British investor. I have my own book, Death is Wrong, the first illustrated children's book on indefinite life extension, which has been translated into Russian, French, Portuguese, and Spanish. Uh, we've distributed a few copies of Death is Wrong. Senator Melanie Scheibel, at whose invitation this event was organized, came by and she received her copy of the book. We also have as our guests uh, Anastasia Sin, famous cyborg magician and biohacker, and Ryan Starr, who is an expert on microchip technologies and GPS systems. They are here to explain what these technologies can and cannot do. And this is important because tomorrow a work session will be held at the Senate on Assembly Bill 226. This is the bill that originally started fairly innocuously. It would have prohibited the coercive implantation of microchips. And of course, as the Transhumanist Party, we don't support any device being implanted in a person without that person's consent. However, in the assembly, the bill was amended to also prohibit participation in a voluntary program for the implantation of a microchip. And that would criminalize a lot of the activities of biohackers and other technology enthusiasts. So we decided to step in and provide some information, and this seems to be working. At tomorrow's work session, we expect that an amendment will be proposed that would pare down the bill, essentially back to just prohibiting the coercive implantation of microchips, and also prohibiting employers from requiring such implantation as a condition of employment, or prohibiting any insurance entity or bail agent from requiring a person to be microchipped. And again, uh, from a civil liberties standpoint, we believe in morphological freedom, in individual autonomy. So nobody should be required to get a microchip. But nonetheless, for people's voluntary chosen uses, uh, this is another technology that offers a lot of promise in the years to come. So hopefully today the attendees got a glimpse at the world of transhumanism. There's certainly a lot more than a glimpse that is needed in order to affect policy in the long term and in order to have these issues be at the forefront of people's consideration. But this is a start. This is a way of getting legislators, lobbyists, and citizens who visit the legislature to be aware of transhumanism and emerging technologies and the increasing role they will play in the coming years. One final remark I would like to make is that the majority of the reception we received was not hostile at all. People were curious, people had some questions, some people had reservations, but most people are willing to talk about this. And if we can have these discussions, these dialogues, that is how progress is made. So thank you very much. Good morning, Anastasia. Good morning, how are you? Doing well. Awesome. We're pleased to see you today at the Cyborg and Transhumanist Forum. So uh, could you please let us know what brought you here and what are some of the devices that you're showing today? Well, what brought me here is Bill uh, AB226 and wanting it revised so that it doesn't include any bodily autonomy issues so that people can get microchips if they want microchips. I'm all for people not wanting microchips and not getting microchips. So that's why I'm here. And so I brought along with me some examples of microchips. Uh, my 
so I'll put these ones down here and I'll just go right to the juice. My implant catches on all my metal. So this is what everyone's so afraid of, this little, little microchip. That's all it is. And really what it is, is one of these. It's a paper NFC tag that you can buy and put on your desk where you go to bed and you put your phone and it triggers some kind of action on your phone. That's exactly what these are, same thing. So I've been explaining that to people so they could get a better handle on the technology, see that it can't be tracked and that you have to touch it in order to leach the power required to send the information. I also have a couple of other devices, things that are like wearables that ideally I would love to see them made into implantable technology. This is called the Spire Stone and it will text you if you're breathing stressfully. It also acts as a pedometer and be a, brought a few other things like some bone conduction technology rings that you wear on your finger and you can talk on your phone with your finger. The company that is doing this is actually building me a bone conduction set of teeth for my cyborg denture project. And let's see, we've got a nice little LED microchip here that I plan on implanting. And you can see how it lights up. And this really doesn't do anything other than look cool. <laughs> and that's fine by me. And I brought the Vanish Magic magazine that I was on the cover of and they did a whole cyborg magic article. And then a couple of weeks ago, the Las Vegas Weekly did a big biohacking article that they featured Elon Musk and myself and a couple of other local people in. I uh, brought some magnet rings, which I've been giving away so that people can learn what it's like to have a magnet implanted in your fingertip and feel electromagnetic fields. Um, some stickers and some buttons and this awesome little button here that I love that I have programmed with a whole bunch of things, including the banners for the forum that we are at right now. There it is, the Cyborg and Transhumanist Forum. Pretty neat. Yes, indeed. I think for many of the attendees today, this is the first time that they have seen a lot of these technologies. Yeah, and indeed. What is important is if they are going to be making policy about these devices. They need they, to understand them. Yes, yes. They should have some first-hand experience. So thank you very much, Anastasia, for coming today no and for educating all of the visitors that we've had. No problem. Happy to be here. Indeed. Good morning, Ryan, and welcome to the Cyborg and Transhumanist Forum. Tell us a bit about yourself and what brought you here today. So um, aside from being you know, implantee, I've got a lot of knowledge as far as the signal stuff is concerned. This is where I see a lot of misinformation being passed around, especially around keep, um, the legislation and whatnot. So I'm here to you know, set things straight, I guess. Indeed. So what are some of the devices that you've brought today? So, I mean, we've got you know, some NFC tags. Uh, this is an electromagnetic microphone. It hears electronic noise that isn't, you know, audible to the human ear without some help. So the reason I brought this today was because everything electronic um, it puts out some sort of electromagnetic signal. Now, when it comes to people being afraid of, you know, NFC tags and tracking, I can, you know, display empirically that there's no signal coming out of these tags, therefore they cannot be tracked at all. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that would imply that a lot of the privacy concerns of those who advocated the more extreme versions of Assembly Bill 226 would be unwarranted given what these technologies are and are not capable of doing. Correct. Not only do they not understand how the, this technology works, but GPS is kind of the, the main thing people are afraid of is them, of GPS tracking them with the chips. There's a fundamental misunderstanding about how GPS works as well. Um, Essentially, the GPS satellites are just blasting down their location data, their, their ephemeris data. Mm -hmm. um, without a secondary device like your cell phone or a GPS receiver, it's about as useless as a NFC tag without its reader as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's interesting because back in 2017, you published an article on the U.S. Transhumanist Party website about this voluntary microchipping 
initiative that the company Three Square Market had uh, offered to its employees in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And then two years later, Assemblyman Daly brought forth Assembly Bill 226, where he seems to have read about the same program, uh, but he became quite alarmed about it. And you pointed out in your article, uh, really, this isn't uh, that <laughs> big of uh, a problem, and it, it's not a violation of those employees' privacy at all. So could you please discuss that a bit more? So, I mean, the first thing to set straight about uh, the three square markings that everyone volunteered to do it. No one was under pressure to do it. Um, anyone who does it is simply geeked out by the possibilities. Um, I get the impression that it's people see these things, they make big news, and they don't really bother to actually do the research. When I first discovered this stuff, I had a lot of the same questions and concerns that many privacy people do who, before they do any of the actual research. You know, I got into biohacking because I was interested in magnets, not um, NFC tags. But you know, as someone who's a, a privacy nut, a former Intel analyst, I did all the research and realized that not only is there no privacy, no real security threat, but they actually can help improve your security, especially online, where there seems to be two different versions of yourself, your physical self and your digital self. Indeed, indeed. So what do you think would be an effective way of getting a more proportional perspective on privacy issues and emerging technologies to take hold among policymakers and among the general public who sometimes just see these sensational news items? Yeah, um, we can't make knee-jerk decisions based on someone's thought or fear. There has to be actual data to back up their claims and that's what AB 226 lacks. Um, and a lot of it stems from the fact that it's, it's very, very young technology. And uh, we're not even at scratching the surface yet. We're just kind of brushing the surface. So, you know, we can't make laws on hypotheticals. We have to use actual data and there has to be conversation with those who actually know about this technology right. before any law is passed. Yes, absolutely. And we do have, I think, a serious possibility of making an impact on this issue. Assembly Bill 226 is scheduled for work session tomorrow morning uh, on Thursday, May 16th. However, if it goes to work session, there is likely going to be a further amendment yeah. proposed to it. And that amendment may alleviate some of our concerns. My understanding is it would limit the scope of applicability of the bill to government agencies, employers, insurers, and bail agents. So it would no longer prohibit any other person from undertaking a voluntary uh, microchip implantation program. Yeah. The language regarding the prohibition of voluntary microchipping is going to be removed and my understanding is there will be a specific clause that will state nothing prohibits an individual from voluntarily seeking a microchip implant. Yeah, I mean, as far as you know, someone voluntarily wanting an implant, I mean, it's your bodily autonomy. Right. It's your body, you should do what you want with it. I, I find the addition of bail um, being included in the bill kind of interesting because, again, what's the purpose of specifically prohibiting you know, bail bondsmen from um, having someone use a tag, it, it, go, it feeds into the whole tracking thing again, really. Because what's, what's every bail bondsman's fear? Person on bail is going to run. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that if a bail bondsman puts a chip in someone, they're still not going to find the person, so it's kind of a moot point. Mm -hmm. So you don't think those chips are actually as effective for the bail bondsman's purposes no, as some people fear? I mean, unless 
you know, they want to just sit down in their office and geek out about turning a flashlight on and off <laughs> or opening up someone's business card, but you have to understand that you really have to be within millimeters of this thing to actually scan, you know, via a phone or other reading device. It's, I mean, your phone that you're recording this on right now can't scan right. the tag. It's right. not even anywhere near close enough. So, uh, I, that's why we're here. A lot of information needs to be clarified. So, Yes, indeed. Well, hopefully over the coming few hours, we'll have opportunities to offer these clarifications. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Ryan, for being here and for your thoughts today. So this is the Cyborg and Transhumanist Forum. Wow. I'm the first presenter here, but we will have others shortly after 9 a.m. But essentially, this is the booth of the Transhumanist Party. We support putting science, health, and technology at the forefront of American politics. Yeah, during aging, I love it. Like, all these topics, and never talks like that. But I would say, you know, losing your mind when you get older isn't normal. It's a disease. It's of course. Alzheimer's dementia, things like that. And people are like, oh, no, well, my grandfather had just because you've seen it before doesn't mean it's a good thing, you know. Yes. But uh, I'm with you on that. And, uh, Thank you. It's crazy good. But yeah, and then now there's just technology. Who knows what uh, the future of life could be? It could store your brain in a computer you know, one day. Very top line. You know, <laughs> you know, highlight of that. But yeah. Yes. Within our lifetimes, a lot of these advances will happen. So Aubrey de Grey, the author of this book, Ending Aging, used to say that. Within 25 years, there's about a 50% probability of reaching longevity escape velocity with adequate funding. Yeah. But he has revised his timeline to 18 years because of the advances that have been happening recently, as well as the influx of funds and investment. Yeah. So oh, yeah. this book by Jim Mellon, Juvenescence, is also the name of the venture capital fund that Jim Mellon has founded. He is an investor from the UK and he has put in millions of dollars into startups in rejuvenation biotechnology. That's excellent. So I've been following the literature there and go. emerging research. This is the SENS Research Foundation that Aubrey de Grey founded and they are a nonprofit organization that essentially funds fairly small-scale research projects into the types of aging-related damage and how to reverse them. Typically, they so work... You know, death mm -hmm. or degradation, mm -hmm. clone of a clone of a clone, whole basis. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Yeah, I would, I'm always fascinated by this stuff because I'm actually a scientist. I'm not a political scientist, but... Uh, Nobody in that building knows this because everybody else just has a political science degree. Ah, oh, what is your degree in? I have a couple, but I got a bachelor's in biochem, and mm -hmm. then I have a wildlife ecology and environmental science, and then I have a minor in botany and agrarian studies, so mm -hmm. like you know, growing live things. So I got two Excellent. minors in that, so I got three, three science degrees. Mm -hmm. I ever took a political science class in my life. <laughs> That's impressive. You're let me lobby in this building. Yeah. <laughs> You're essentially one of us then. Because oh, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's the fun <laughs> part is actually knowing science. Because people talk to the building, you're like, what the hell are you talking mm -hmm. about? Like, show me a peer reviewed source, right? <laughs> right. Like, well, put up or shut up. So science is very useful in lobbying, mm -hmm. if used properly. So. Right. We need more of that in politics. Actually, one of the platform yeah, planks. Does. Yes, absolutely. And uh, feel free, if you want to sign up, even to join the Transhumanist Party, we have uh, a sheet here. It's not an exclusive commitment. It's absolutely free. You're free to be a member of other parties as well. And one of our platform planks is actually to encourage more political involvement by scientifically educated and scientifically literate individuals so that we don't have the plurality of political roles and political decisions occupied by attorneys. Well, and that's... Mm, that's my language. <laughs> All right, good seeing you. Okay. So the capabilities of that are the capabilities of this. Okay. So you can't, I mean, 
love to have this on the back and track you. <laughs> no, well, I, I right. appreciate it. <laughs> so, yeah, and also, if you're interested, these are magnet rings. I think they'll fit you. Maybe. But if you wear these rings around, not to mess up your phone, I have a bunch of rings. Right. I have rings with my phone. But you, when you go to use your microwave, put your finger on the microwave and see how your finger bubbles. Because that's okay. what we feel when we have magnets in these super rings. Really? And it gives you like a sixth sense. Okay. And uh, microwaves, electromagnetic fields, like any kind of big breaker box, you're really going to notice it. Microwaves are the place to start. Does it have to be turned on? Pardon me? Do you have to have to be turned on? The microwaves? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And my whole hand vibrates around the microwave. Yeah. No, I'm totally like, if they make a chip that makes you like a matrix dude, I'm on. Right? I'm on it, dude. Oh, uh, uh, see, you're like, you're so. And we're sitting there like, yes. <laughs> I'm actually getting a, a Linux computer implanted in my eye. We're calling it Wi Fi. Okay. So, what it does is it, it goes in my leg, and I can take a playing card like I have with these ones, which yeah. I've embedded with NFC. And so, I can program them to say anything that I want. So, what I would do is I would start with. Um, she likes to flirt, so she blinks at you. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is the first electronic playing card. But as you can see, she needs the power from my yeah. phone. Uh -huh. And then her heart will beat at you. Oh, thanks. And she'll start singing you a song. I think it might be the Jason. But if I had this in my leg, and I had a computer in my leg, yeah. when I do this, she says Queen of Hearts. It goes to my phone, which goes to my earpiece and vibrates the magnet in my ear, and I hear it inside my head in real time, clean of hearts when I scan it over my leg. So I think that's like, uh, as close to a cyborg that we could do right now. Indeed. For like a really stupid purpose, a card trick. Hey, Most whatever. magicians are like, just learn how to palm a card and see that. I'd really rather do it this way. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and these ones, these are microchips, they're a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, but that's only because they house an LED inside them. Oh, okay. So I just want to put that in just for the heck of it. It's All cool. Right. It doesn't do anything else. So, we had a question too. When you're like at the airport to get stopped, no problem. I've done the first class, I've been bonded, I've gone through the scanners, I've gone through the bank. Uh, that thing. Yeah. And I get stopped. <laughs> they stopped me for my hair piece. I have some little wires in my hair and they stopped me for that. But no, no, no I have no problems at all. Even with the magnet? This magnet, the really giant one? Yeah. Yeah, no problems. Okay. None whatsoever. And the wand, even when I go to shows here in or back in yeah. Vegas, it doesn't even set off the wand. So I don't know why a magnet doesn't set off. I guess because it's a metal detector, not a magnet detector. And yeah. it's using a magnet. To, but you would think another magnet would still trigger it, but it doesn't. It's very strange. Also, the MRI machines, mm -hmm. I have friends that have gone in with magnet implants, and they have no problems. And that's because the way the magnet goes around in a circle is not the same, like, if you're holding a magnet that's still under your skin, it's not going to rip it out. It'll rip the metal out more than it'll rip the magnet out. It's something to do with the polarities, and I'm not science enough to understand it, but all I know is that their magnet did not get ripped out in an MRI. Yeah. So, Ryan, uh, one potential concern that I could imagine proponents of AB226 articulating would be, even if today's uh, NFC, RFID technologies aren't capable of detailed tracking of an individual or violations of privacy or external impositions, perhaps future technologies might be developed that would. Uh, do you think this technology could ever evolve into something that would facilitate remote tracking? No, it would take an extreme amount of advancement and miniaturization for any of it to be possible. I mean, you just have to, you have to look at the physics of the matter, really. You have to look at the antenna, uh, antenna gain. There's only so much you can do to boost antenna gain. So it, the reality is, if you wanted to, if you wanted to track someone with technology, this isn't even the the appropriate format to do it. And I mean, they do have that technology. It's strapped to a person's leg who's on house arrest. And even still, that thing is huge. It's got to be charged all the time. It's the the footprint is only so big to get you know into the skin. So it's, it would take some sort of technological miracle development for it to be possible. Yes, and you make an interesting point as well, that these tracking 
technologies exist in a different format today, which is quite familiar, and yeah. that's people wearing a, a bracelet uh, around their leg. Yeah, I mean, even your phone is wildly more susceptible to tracking than this, which actually requires the phone to even use in the first place. So why track someone with their tag if they already have their phone with them? Right, right. So it seems like a lot of these fears about tracking simply arise because of the lack of familiarity uh, that many people have with implantable tags and uh, much more ubiquitous devices are actually much more effective at tracking yet fewer people raise concerns about that. Well, it's a lack of technical knowledge on a, on a very broad scale. I mean most people don't understand how their phones work either. Mm -hmm. They just know if, there's, if their call drops. So it's education is definitely the key to, for me, most if not all problems, but specifically this, understanding the science behind it, understanding the, the concrete limitations that physics and antennas um, you know, have to, by nature, abide by. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts. I think this is a moment in history when these technologies are just coming into public awareness, in large part because of what people like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are doing. And Joe Rogan, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So before, about five years ago, if we were to hold something like this, people would just say, what is this? Yeah. I think that the CES is the place to be mm -hmm. when it comes to this kind of stuff, too, because mm -hmm. they're, that's where Google showed their contact lens, that's where even the wearables market's looking at calling everything invisibles mm -hmm. because there is a want for people to have these things implanted, so, mm -hmm. yeah. What I wanted to know is, could you imagine if I got these little LEDs implanted and I sat in the electric chair and it, they lit? <laughs> they did not. I was holding them, trying to get them to light. Yeah. It wouldn't work. It has to be fluorescent tubing. <laughs> Some kind of gas. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been doing this? Um, the cyborg stuff, yeah. only about two, two and a half years. The magician stuff, 14 years. I think I've seen your husband film like many years ago. He's a funny dude. Yeah. Here. Uh, you so your husband these? is no. Jonathan? This is, uh, yes. Awesome. He, this is a table <laughs> pranks thing. It's a USB, so you just flip it and put it in your computer and you can watch the okay. video that we made that'll teach you how to make your friends laugh at the dinner table. Thank you. Because no I'm some alcohol. Usually alcohol, but <laughs> I used to watch him on Comedy Central as a kid. <laughs> yeah, that's it. He gets that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, thank you. I will be back. And then there's no repercussions. I mean, animals happen. And animals happen. My cats have microchips. And do you guys have Androids? No, I have an iPhone, oh. so it's probably less exciting. But yeah, it'll, it'll how, be a so for you how do I program it to do? What? Is it a 10? No, but I need to get a new one. But how would I program it to do things? Well, see, that's the thing. If you have an iPhone, I can't give you very good advice because okay. I don't. But if you have an Android, I can teach you left, right, and center. If you have an iPhone 10, there is an app called NFC Tools. You download it, and it basically does the work for you. It looks similar to this. So this is NFC Tools in my Android phone. So I can do tasks and add a task. And there's all these things I can do. I can have it, you know, send a text message or make a call on a speakerphone or all these things. Or what I like to do is go to the URL and put in a YouTube video. So you can make your chip play YouTube. Or you can program it. Once you have it in there and you have a lock like this, which are about $100 on Amazon, you can literally follow the instructions that come with this device to program the little keys they give you, and just put your hand there instead. Oh, and then it'll just read it? Yeah, it'll actually program it. Like it'll, oh. It doesn't program it. it. It takes the number that is your chip and recognizes the number inside the machine. So. And theoretically, you could program one chip to do multiple things. With different yes, machines. you can. Yeah, it's um, like I have this one here, for example. It's programmed to speak and send a text message. The badass surgeon put this microchip in me for real Lufano scars. And it also just texted him to say, thanks, badass. And I also haven't called Dr. Badass because Dr. Technically, you know, shouldn't be doing this. And no, but I think, I just want to say thank you because, like, it totally changed my opinion of the whole oh, thing. Oh, awesome. Really, and I think that bill was going to move, and I think your testimony legitimately, like, changed a lot of hearts and minds. Oh, so, thank you. I'm so yeah. glad because that was some scary stuff. Well, no, well, it's just, like, I, I think, and from my perspective, the disability stuff was really concerning because I think we can do so much for that population. Yep. Yeah.
Yeah, you can't even open a door with the yeah. key. This is or like, like hearing stuff and sight stuff. I think. Yeah. Use I have a Trigus magnet that vibrates with this copper wire induction device that I have, so okay. I can actually hear inside my foot. Because why not? Yeah, why not? Okay. Kind of like a low-tech cochlear implant. Yeah, okay. I can edit data sets, but look at all the the work that I have to do. I have to go in, I have to change the command here, which I don't want to do because it opens up my camera that I use for videos. Got it. Oh, okay. But it it's not a quick thing. It's not an easy thing. And the person... It's much who, easier to read a paper tag because the, the antenna is nice and flat and wide. Yeah. These are round and tight and they're really hard to get the right angle. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. And even these, like you can't do any. These are paper. You've seen these before, yeah? Like just NFC oh, tags. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like, that's exactly what a microchip is. But those are like inventory control, right? Is that the that's stuff? what this is? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the exact. These chips are not capable of much more than that. Right. All it is is just a trigger so saying, simple. "Hey, you scanned this, and if I scan it with the right programming, it'll trigger this action." You know. And you have to have the program on your phone too. You have to have NFC tools. Otherwise, it just says new tag scanned. No matter yeah. what's on it. There are, I mean, it's cool technology. There's a lot of fun potential, but there are so many roadblocks oh, and hurdles to overcome. I have a water case either. I have a little water case of glitter in it. It won't read chips. Okay. Through. I'm a skeptic, right? I think technology can solve a lot of problems. I don't think it's going to solve all our problems. I don't think it's going to immediately thrust us into a dystopian future. <laughs> you know? Like, no, climate change is going to do that. We don't need the, you know, we don't need the robots. So yeah, that's... I don't know if we're gonna, I would love to see that dystopian future. Technology <laughs> can help avert climate change, though, uh, especially now that uh, solar energy is becoming economical. And we just let's get Cheeto out of office first. And then, well. yeah. <laughs> yeah. then we can talk about, like, the, right. he's trying to put oil and coal back in the game. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> so, I, you know, the, these are the kinds of things we have to, I think, continue because people just are completely mm -hmm. paranoid and, and, right. you know, it's. But it's no like, one wants to slow down and take the time to do the research on it. Well, and you know, I mean, once we get into this building and the session has started, we're doing, they're going through a thousand bills in 120 days. And That's so insane. It's right. not possible. It's, they, it's <laughs> not ideal. Right. Well, <laughs> Why are there so many bills? The Transhumanist Party has, as one of its platform planks, a minimum time frame of consideration for a bill. So, say for every 20 pages, you have a minimum 24 hour period uh, <laughs> where y you need to have that time to actually read the bill, discuss it before it goes to any sort of official action like a vote. Right, which would be great, but we had we passed a 120 day limitation on ourselves, so right. we can't. <laughs> so then we would be. Fewer bills? Fewer, bi yeah, Fewer bills exactly. is definitely a possibility. Because ah. senators all get to introduce 10, and the assembly gets to introduce 5, and all the committees can introduce, and the, all the state agencies can introduce. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get all of those done, yeah. wow. And everyone has their pet project. <laughs> so, oh, man. Which, this seems right. to be Assemblyman Daly's pet this project. Is, this is, is, is Assemblyman Daly a Christian? I'm Over just curious. Okay. Because right. I just I thought yeah. I, I just got the mark a, of the beast vibe from him. Because yeah. I get that a lot. Did he come talk to you or you just you no, know? No, I never committee. met him. Oh, just, uh, uh, just told on him television. Guys, I told him you guys were coming. Yeah. And they're on the floor right now. But um, I don't I don't think this I, the just based on my conversations with them, I don't think it's sort of a religious thing. Right. I think it's more that's, of a... That's the most impossible thing to get past. Right. It's really hard to I get past that argument. I think it's more of a, you kids get off my lawn thing. <laughs> like, this is just... He read about the... the word Three Republic. square market. <laughs> right. He read about that and he's like, no, that's just wrong. We just shouldn't do that to people. That's the company in Wisconsin that had the voluntary microchipping program. So but that's he, voluntary. Right. He yeah. read about that, and that's why he amended his bill to encompass the voluntary program. See, here I was thinking that he saw the article in the Las Vegas Weekly, and, <laughs> <laughs> like, and that was the reason. No, no, he read about this over the summer and just thought no human being should be microchipped, period. End of story.
just it shouldn't happen. Yeah, he doesn't even understand how it works or why people want to do it. It's just that I, I don't like it. I can uh, I can uh, put up a bill. I'm gonna do it because I've got really five free that ones. He said that nobody like when I did the testimony. He said nobody nobody does this. Nobody has these. We got to get it on it now before people start doing this. And I'm like, I have 15 <laughs> yeah. microchips. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, and that's the thing. I mean, the minute you start researching it, you're like, this is pretty widespread. It's yeah. very common in Europe. You know, it's a high-end VIP thing. It wouldn't surprise me. And and I haven't... I, he's, Assemblyman Daly's been working with this, so I haven't really felt like I needed to get the full court press. But it wouldn't surprise me if the casinos that have operations in Europe also said, oh, yeah, the, your VIP chip works in you know, Paris just as well it works as in Vegas, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's really common at VIP clubs in Europe, yeah. so. But we're still allowing people to do that if they want, aren't we? I mean, like, if a, if a VIP club gives you the option of having a card or a chip, and you say, oh, I'll have the chip, yeah. then you can still do it, right? It, According it should, to the amendment? It should, yes. Yeah, saying that the int- he doesn't want people being enticed, being right. told no, they're given no something. incentives, yeah. But, so I was like, I wanted the language to be something like additional incentive. So if you joined the, you know, the... Additional, that's a great, great addition. The gaming club, whatever, <laughs> yeah. the high rollers club, whatever they call it. Mm-hmm. You get incentives, right? You right. get free play, you get discount. Like, that's an incentive. But if it just, if we didn't say, and then you got extra if you got microchipped. I'm fine, you know, like right now, like yeah. that's okay. So, like when I first started getting into this, I was, I was the skeptic. I was the security, privacy, you know, mm-hmm. like you know, what can be done with this? Because I was an Intel guy, you know, it was, right. it was my job to ask these questions. Right. And then I actually took the time to do the research on it, and realized that my concerns were completely unfounded. They were based off of movies and books, right. which is where a lot of this comes from. And I know I've written about actually it's going to be in the book yes <laughs> Ri- <laughs> wrote about how people you know they get a piece of fiction mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they just take it as you know on on face value this, this is what's right. going to happen no right. it's what could happen right and if we listen to all these stories and put them all together we realize that we can ha- we have the power to prevent these features from coming they're not you know right. looks into the future they're cautionary tales Right. So we, right. it's on us to think about all these things and then do the actual research on them. Right. Well, and to me, so much of science fiction, what's great about it is it does inform technology that we want to use. Like cell phones really were, you know, Star Trek communicators yes. mm-hmm. to start. <laughs> because that's how we knew how they worked, right? Yeah. And so we knew that worked. And the, you know, the automatic doors when those movies first came out, that was a big deal. And now you have that everywhere. Like, that's, yeah. not, a, that's not a thing. But we certainly don't have transporters. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a little bit of hybrid technology to the co- So it's not, you know, it's not, yeah. It's, I've been, yeah. But I've we been do thinking. have DARPA. We have DARPA, the government agency that's right. making those implants that go in Alzheimer's patients that actually right. work with the brain synapses to help remember memory. Right. Right. Did, right. did right. you see yeah. Alex Glow's little April Fool's joke? The, the brain computer implant. Yeah, she got me. Yeah, she got she me too. So no, I was I, writing her like, girl, I want it. Send I, it to I me fell, now. I'll pay anything. I fell hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> yep. She um. got me so hard. April <laughs> Fool's joke, man. She yeah. got all of us cyborg people were like, you built this, we want it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how, that's how these things happen too, right? So the book Ryan was talking about is called The Transhumanism Handbook. It's coming out in July, but it's an extensive anthology. We've had over 70 authors contribute yeah, chapters like pages, to the book. Which I have three. <laughs> And I have a chapter in there about the Transhumanist Party as well. It is being compiled as a kind of academic edition on current thinking in transhumanism, and it spans the range of topics from art to technology to politics. So it's going to be hopefully quite an influential book, but a book that transhumanists are going to be talking about in the coming years. I think that's great. One of the things we should definitely think about is sort of post today, what else we can do to kind of amplify this message and get people less afraid and more interested. So I think uh, not 
necessarily like book chapters, but maybe if we did some LinkedIn posts or mm-hmm. um, you know, did some short explainers right. and yeah. point people to resources where they can find out more, mm-hmm. um, just to kind of be like, it's not, you don't have to be afraid, yeah. you can be informed. Right. And that's, that's <laughs> the challenge with technology, advancing technology is yeah. condensing it into that 30 second commercial Right. You know, attention span that you know a lot of people have. You have to get that message in quick, concise, and in a way that they understand. Right. When you start talking about you know satellite signal, inductive power, antenna polarity, it no right. one's going to. They're just check out too long. Didn't watch. I'm gonna go watch cats now. Right. <laughs> yeah. No. I. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. So, well, when we. I, I'm all about the short attention span theater. When we did the blockchain conference, we made we started out with uh, lightning rounds from all the industry folks, and we gave them six minutes. Like, tell us how you're using this technology in six minutes. So you can't explain the technology. You just have to be like, it's a magic database, and here's what we're doing with it. <laughs> like, that's how you have to do it. Because people don't need to know the technology. They just need to kind of know the parameters any little tech and if they if they don't understand the technology they shouldn't immediately jump to oh my god bad right mm-hmm. right because on on face value it's just an optional piece of technology right. no one's pushing it and there's right. not been an example to date of anyone being forced to have an implant right so it's just cool little bits that some people are into Right. Mm-hmm. It's just like body piercings and tattoos. Right. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I definitely think if we did a some kind of workshop after the session, mm-hmm. and especially if we had a little time to prepare, yes. and get more folks to come, and yes. sort of show what they're doing with right. it. Right. I I think we could definitely get a ton mm-hmm. of people. Another uh, fairly famous biohacker. That Rich. is the guy who yeah. invented the yeah. ear mag. He's got a lot of interesting insight as far as implants and discrimination. You know what happened. Oh yeah, Rich so. is one of my best friends. Yeah, so there's already discrimination in courts against people who biohack. So he'd be a great person to have her answer a lot of questions. He lost his kids because of biohack. Yeah. His wife sued him. Like, didn't sue him. Sued for custody for of the children. Custody. Yeah. Pretty much one main, main custody. He needs to get to see them every other weekend. But yeah, it's not a good scene. Well, when I was working on a non-discrimination law for um, transgender people, one of the legislators said, are we done? Or who, is there somebody next after this? We did, you know, we did women, we did African Americans, we did gay people, now we're doing transgender people. I was like, now there's I, I really wanted to one. say, well, if you've seen X-Men, then right. mutants are next. Mutants but, and transhumanists. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But I, I didn't, because I, I thought he would freak out. <laughs> but I've been thinking for a long time, yeah, that's who's not. I mean, when whenever you take people and collectively discriminate against them as a class, not because of any specific performance or you know issue, but just because you belong to this class, that should be protected. So maybe that'll be our next thing that we do. <laughs> but when we did the blockchain conferences we did one in Reno, we did one in Vegas. Oh. So we wouldn't you know, we could possibly do oh, that would be right. so one great. at each end of the state. That'd be easier for um, Rich to get to that one too, because it's an eight hour drive. Oh yeah, yeah it's, it's really it's yes. Super. I hope they build a proper four lane highway between northern and southern <laughs> Nevada in the next decade. Could we have one between Los Angeles and Vegas too, please? There, like, yeah. isn't there's one? a two lane highway. Oh wow. yeah it's bad. It's two lanes for about two hours. It's yeah. not fun. No, it's bad. <laughs> It's not too bad. It's not bad. It's really not bad. Honestly, this is razor sharp all the way around. Yeah. So it's it goes in like pretty silly back in. And pop it in and then you're done. And that one is one of the ones that you can program and do a multitude of things if you have one of these little Android phones. You can make it play videos and open business uh, websites, whatever you want. This one's an LED microchip, which I think is just cool. I want it. Just so I can light up. There's no tech. There's no reason for this other than it's pretty cool. That's funny. Do you okay. use like an app? To no, control? it's NFC or readers. It's a signal that's sent out by your phone, uh-huh. but it's also sent out by anything that scans a ID tag. So like okay. if you guys need to scan cards to get past certain doors in the building, you can put your hand up to that 
and do your chips ever go off unintentionally? They can't because they're really hard to read. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they're completely I'll let him passive. There's the no passive battery stuff. or anything. The only way they work is by leeching power off of the secondary device. Yeah. So, oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're like standing next to Courtney, uh, and, and like, like it's like, like, oh, it's calling. It would literally. You have to know exactly where her reader is on her phone. So yeah. my gotcha. reader is right so here. It's very, and very not unlikely. only that, you have to have it in the right direction as gotcha. well. It's directional. So gotcha. it's really, you were the only person who knows where your chip is and how to scan it. You'd gotcha. have to. If you were looking for someone. You know, like that artist, that poet that I spoke of when yeah. I was testifying, yeah. she put all of her chips exactly the same way. So when you ran your phone down, that was how it worked. It had gotcha. to, and it just was like a line down her body. Gotcha. You could follow the line. Um, if you have things going in diagonally, like this one here, this is like a another microchip you can see it uh -huh. uh -huh. It's going diagonally, and it'll be diagonally, just because that's the way I wanted it. So yeah. Read like that. Yeah. So I don't like, like that. that. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. And you never really know how they're going to read until you put them in, either, unfortunately, because they can roll. Ah, you know, swelling for and a couple the swelling, weeks and, and they can move around. They don't move around around your hand. They just move around in that general area. As you can see, they don't. It's not like I can even get it to go anywhere else in my body. It's under the skin. It's going to stay there. Yeah. Some people have had them migrate, but that's I don't understand where they put them. If they migrate, how deep did they put these? Chains? Yeah, I think they were pretty cool. they, they were off. Yeah. Had to go to another way. Um, this thing here, I want to get this implanted. This thing uh, t literally texts you when you're breathing stressfully and says, hey, here's a breathing exercise. Let's just sit down and do this app thing and let's breathe. And I wear it as a wearable, but I think it would be so much cooler to implant it, get this metal thing off. It's the perfect size to like just stick it right here. Oh my gosh. And it'll always tell you your health. I want to have all my little heart rate monitors and where's my ring? This thing is a variable heart rate monitor. I want all this stuff implanted. So when I wake up in the morning, it's already charged, and I just look at my phone and go, oh, okay, my heart was good last night, and then I need to run five miles today. And my readiness level is only 72. Crap. <laughs> That's pretty much what my devices do now, and I just want that to be part of my body on a regular basis. Yeah. We're not quite there yet, and people, with me and my friends, we do stupid things like cook things like this and try and get them working. Yeah. Because we know that you know the government's not going to do it for a long time, and we don't want to wait. I don't want to be an old person on this stuff. So I want to tell you now. How did you get started? Uh, just as a magician, and yeah. then I met somebody named Tim, and he was kind of like the king of cyborgs, and just really intelligent speaker, and blew my mind with all the stuff that you could do with it. So yeah, um, you saw this demonstration. Yeah, the door. This is cool. This is um, an NFC tag playing card that I made. And she, see how like even here you're not getting a signal mm -hmm. off of her. It has yeah. to be like that close, and then her heart will beat at you too. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and she should hopefully play the song that I programmed her to play, but we'll see. Um, so that's the world's first electronic playing card. And the microchip tags, these little guys here, are the exact same tag as this. This is an N15, N15 tag, N15 tag. They have the same memory, which isn't very much. Mm -hmm. They can't track people or I can stick this on your jacket and track you. I can't. There's no battery. Mm -hmm. See, everything needs a battery to operate, so this thing can only leach just like my pictures. I should have brought the skateboards I made had made with the 216 tags put in there. Oh. So you could store data and pass messages to your friends when you skate up and whatnot. Oh my gosh, that's cool. You made them? A, a, a guy who builds boards. But how do you, when you skate up to your friends, you have to touch their board with an yeah. NFC reader? Yeah, it was just a thought experiment, you know. Oh, okay. yeah. So I was going to say, because when, when two chips passively pass each other, nothing, no, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Yeah. Yeah. It was literally just a geeky thing. Like, oh, we can put this in here, laminate it in, and then if you want to pass a message to your friend's phone, these things go like that. I have to, I've got so many chips in my hands that to show you my, my temperature one that's under my arm, 91.4 is what it's reading right now. I have to like literally hold this camera <laughs> yeah, like, like this so it doesn't read any of my other chips. That's crazy. <laughs> and how many chips do you have? Oh god, I'm up to 25 total implants, nine of which are magnets, so it's 25 taken around and 16. Wow. Yeah, I don't even, I think I've just stopped kind of counting because the two in my feet are for my NFC locks that, so I can do escapes. Oh cool. My hands up. Oh cool. Um, which magicians normally get their hands up first? So Throw other magicians, it's a weird trick. They're like, how do you get out? Like, what? Because I have chips and unlock the locks, you don't. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, like I'm in it. Also, you need to have a magnet that these will fit on your finger. These, if you wear them enough and go check out a microwave, you're going to have a sixth sense. It lets you feel the electromagnetic field because magnets react to electromagnetic. It's kind of neat. Super cool, right? So those are yours. Enjoy. Oh, wear awesome. them all the yeah, check ma um, good breaker boxes too. It'll vibrate your hand. So with all the magnets I have in my hand, my whole hand goes up whenever I feel electromagnetic fields. So when no I'm leaving the um, drugstore and they have the little scanners on, I can just run my hand by it and I feel it. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else I got here. And when did you start? Uh, magic 14 years ago, biohacking two and a half years ago. So. Not that long. Yeah. And amazing. already I'm like going a little crazy with it. I already like the most implanted person around. So. And how did you hear about the bill? I heard about the bill through you, I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> and, yeah. I can't remember both of you. He wrote an article about it because he was watching it and they were watching it. And then they posted it on Facebook. And then someone said, who's in Las Vegas? And then I got tagged in it. And I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Then I saw it and I said, I have a show tonight. Oh, it'll do it. I'll get up in the morning after three hours of sleep and I'll go down. And I'm glad I did because apparently it made a difference. So. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Happy. <laughs> that's really cool. It's the whole point of the process. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, and the magnet in my tritus, I can take this copper wire induction and hide it in my hair and it vibrates and I can hear things inside my head that nobody else can because of the same, the same principle that you're going to feel the magnetic field at a... Uh, microwave, I can feel it inside my head and make sound. So, pretty neat. Super cool, right? I wish I could hide things in my You can wear a cap and hide the copper wire right yeah. in the cap line. I set up a guy in England with the same gimmick <laughs> and, and helped him out with that. Ideally, I'd like to see all things like this like implant, uh, become implantables, but you know, we're far from that because there's so many safety issues and FDA approvals. But it doesn't mean that I can't do it. My friends can do it anyway, which I do. Which is why I'm really big on bodily autonomy. Because if I want to do stuff to my own body, I should be able to do stuff to my own body. And we have the, the community is already doing it. So it's not like I don't know, it doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah, and it's like I mean, there's been some bad press, but what do they call it? It's been an urban parties. legend. The, 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 well, the tracking thing is urban legend. Yeah. Apparently, they've been it's been going on since the 80s. People have been microchipping their children since the 80s, according yeah. to this urban legend, and it hasn't been happening. It's just not true. Are you a cyborg? No. <laughs> you may already be a cyborg if you have any sort of implant, like for medical purposes. No. Do you wear glasses ever? Yes. <laughs> hey, you've got assistive devices. You use technology. Yes. I'm waiting for the nanobots. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. That would be amazing. Ray Kurzweil nanobots. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Well, speaking of which, Ray Kurzweil is oh, yeah. represented here among the books, and I have... This is the book that he wrote in 2005. Oh, yeah. The Singularity is heard. Near. Uh, and he's actually going to release a follow-up, I think later this year, called The Singularity is Nearer, yeah. where he compares actual developments to his predictions from that time mm -hmm. and sets forth new predictions. Essentially, my understanding of Kurzweil's position is he believes a lot of what he prognosticated has come to pass in the sense of technical capability. A lot of it yes. Like he kind of predicted the iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, I forget when. It was like way back in like the 80s or something right. like that, wasn't it? Isn't that in that book? Where he had like you can have a computer in your pocket? Mm -hmm. He wrote two books prior to this on technological predictions the Age of Intelligent Machines in the 1990s and then the Age of Spiritual Machines around early 2000. But this is. That one. Uh, so this is about artificial intelligence and how to essentially emulate human thought processes without reconstructing the brain in minute detail. So there's an argument uh, from certain skeptics of human-like artificial intelligence that the brain is just too complicated. There are so many processes we still don't understand. Uh, but if you think of 
say, a, a procedurally generated universe. Right. Uh, that can be done via a fairly simple algorithm, but the outcome of it is quite complex. So what Ray Kurzweil is articulating in this book is that the human brain also works according to certain essentially procedural algorithms and you don't need that much data to replicate it but you need the correct rules that okay. uh, approximate human thought as long as, yeah as long as you get the root algorithm right right it sort of populates out see that's something that's always fascinating that mm -hmm. concept yes cuz cuz you look at you know it's, like anything, like any any scientific theorem that explains universal processes ends up being very simple. You know yes. what I mean? And understandable. It's like, that's the, the theory of everything that everyone's trying to reach, right? I mean, that's, that's just a piece of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ultimately, there's some, some unify, unifying principle that governs mm -hmm. everything. Yes, and the challenge is we observe the empirical world in all of its complexity, and we have to somehow reverse engineer those basic principles and figure out what the algorithms are uh, without having immediate access to them. And that's, I think, what takes science a long time. But a lot of progress is being made. But there's, they're also using, um, what's it called, like basically sort of evolutionary principles yes. to kind of do different iterations that kind of self-correct mm -hmm. and then advance along the way. Yes, it's indeed. Cool. It's cool stuff. On my YouTube channel, which is this last link here, I have an interview that I did with Ray Kurzweil oh, last you? September. Nice. Yes, so I interviewed him on stage at a conference called RadFest, Rad with two A's, Revolution Against Aging and Death. Uh -huh. And Ray Kurzweil was one of the keynote speakers, and I interviewed him for about 15 minutes afterward. It was quite nice. I got to ask him some original questions in front of an audience of about a thousand people. Cool. So, uh, if, if you want new insights from Were Ray you Kurzweil. There physically or virtually? Oh, I was there physically, nice. and so was he. It's the same thing like people, with like crazy religious people, where like credit cards are of the devil and things like that. It's, it's, it's yeah. always something, and as soon as something new comes along, it won't be our like, idea even, anymore. Even like, I know that there's a lot of things that you can track on my phone, but I don't care. Yeah, I mean? like exactly. Like, well, so are you doing that, something illegal? Like, what are, they, yeah, what are, like, they what are you do? worried about? Like, I, I don't really... Like, you, can be, you can be listening to my conversation. I don't care. That's kind of how I feel. I have an echo. I have a Google. It's like, if you're trying to make it a more pleasant experience for me, I just all that. I don't care. You know, if, if ads pop up that are actually relevant to me because you've been listening to my conversations, cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm like, I embrace it. So I do, too. Like, I embrace like, just... I, I like that... In the future, when you walk through the shopping mall, everything's going to be showing you clothes that are your style and that you wear, right? right? Like that's I mean, what we have we have the technology to do all that. We just don't have it integrated. And that's really the key. Yep, integration. integration. I mean, we can have you like fully fit your house, like a smart house, where where you can walk in, it can sense like your fatigue level, everything with and your then wearables, or automatically right? sense who you are and. Then the temperature. And mm -hmm. Our friend Tim actually built that right with his circadia implant. He yeah. actually had a temperature monitor that worked to tell his yeah. thermometer to turn so, down if he was hot. So how does it work? It, is it like you get like are there different chips for different things? No, or there's like the chips chip? are only passive. So the chips are little tiny things and they can't do a lot. There's, right. there's maybe four different frequencies that they run on okay. and different frequencies work for different things. So like companies will put out a lockbox and it'll only work with 125. Okay. So I have a bunch of those, and I have another you. couple boxes that only work with 138.7, which is like another one. There's technically ranges all across the whole frequency thing, but these are the ones that people put out products on the most often. 13.87, is it? Or 37? I can't remember. Is this one that does the most? 13.56 is NFC, yeah. and then 125 is RFID. Right, and so is 138. But By the way, GPS works at 1,000 megahertz plus instead of just So there's 15. another reason it'll never work for that. <laughs> yeah. There's, but um, 
no one understands the antenna no, but frequency even, status. Even if it does, like, what are they going to do with it? You know what I mean? It's just, it's just sending out, like, a small signal. It doesn't, yeah. Well, that's the thing. It doesn't send out anything right. unless the reader is there. Right. Because it has no power. It, yeah. It has to, it's not like, yeah, it's like, it has to be prox proximity to you. Yeah. So I'm mostly a stage magician. So my NFC tags and my feet unlock the locks when I'm in a four-way lock point for escape. And magicians don't understand how I got out feet first. Because the current will come back and all of a sudden my feet are great. They're like, what? Yeah. yeah. So my feet have that's tags. Cool. Right? So that's cool. Right? So that's one thing that works. I have like five boxes and I, have, I give out five keys and I write a prediction on a piece of paper and I give it to somebody to hold and they are like, they predict the key number three will open. I make them make the prediction and they hold on to it and I know what it is obviously or else I can't unlock the box with my hand because all the keys don't work. None of the keys work. Right. My hand's the thing. Right. So like there's different, there's lots of tricks you can integrate it in, but there are large presentations. So you do it as though it's the key. And it's yeah, really, really all I do is I just put my hand on it and go, yeah. is it this box? Uh -huh. I'm locked. So whenever I'm ready for it to be unlocked, it's unlocked. Which is, so that's perfect. Yeah. Now they say when you have implants like this, it erodes your tissues and it erodes your bone. Of course it does. But why is that a problem? My body's accepting something that I put in there to accentuate it. So. Right. It's changing, and you can't expect your body to stay exact. To it. Right, it's yeah. adapting. So why wouldn't you want that? <laughs> so, yeah, all the arguments against. As long that. as it's not too like intrusive, that's good. Well, the Linux like computer. An or something. Yeah, you gotta watch for that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, like right here on the top of my thigh, I've got a really safe spot where I'm putting in a about this sized implant, and it's going to have NFC, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. So when I have a playing card and I have my entire deck rigged out with NFC tags. Because I split, a card is in three pieces. You can split the front and the back off, and then it's there. So I, I peel the front piece off. It's very hard and tedious. Put an NFC tag in and program every single card to say what the card is. So now I can literally blindfold it, have someone give me a card, or pick a card, run it over my leg, and in real time, here inside my head, Queen of Hearts. Because of all the things. Everything is, yeah. yeah, connected. Yeah. That's cool. Right? And people I don't think so about too. that. Like, no one like, would think about that. And it's yeah. like just a, a whole a whole method that is just, oh, like, just... It's just, an excessive pioneer, method. Just people are... method that right. just no one, even like, people magicians, like, don't have access to. And they think it's stupid. Effects. A lot of them think it's stupid. They're like, why don't you just force a card? I'm like, well, because... <laughs> That's not, that. I'm trying to do proof of concepts here and I'm trying to find purposes for these examples to be used in cybernetics and in art, so. There so those are all the magnets in my hand and I use that for coin matrix, magic tricks, uh, read switch operation, stuff like that. The NFC chips in my feet unlock NFC locks so I can do escapes and get my feet out before my hands, which always freaks magicians out because they're like, I'm cheating. <laughs> Women don't really notice as much. Um, and then I have like boxes at home that I have programmed with the different frequency chips that I have and those boxes unlock when I want them to, but for routines where people can't unlock a box with keys, they keep trying, yeah. but the one that I predicted that would work works or the one they predicted, it's good for that kind of stuff. So without giving away too much of how uh, I do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't uh, give away all your secrets. Yeah, I just thought I'd bring this and yeah. show. There's also um, this, there's a lot of other cool technology. This is blue light technology. You wear it as glasses, so it's a biohack as well. Uh -huh. And you can wear that, and then the blue light will give you energy, or it'll put you to sleep and help your jet lag situation. It runs with an app through your phone, and so you tell it if you want it to help you sleep or or wake you or up. wake you up. <laughs> so here, sleep, travel, adapt to a new time zone, boost your energy levels, feel energized, and. Turn on services. <laughs> I forgot to turn off my Bluetooth. And hopefully once it connects, it'll start just shining my blue light and off I go. Wow. It's a spectrum, just three or four different spectrums. Oh. Don't I look all cyborg-y? <laughs> yes, you do. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And the big name on my arm, if you give me the top of your hand, uh -huh. this here, it wouldn't ruin the ring. Oh. <laughs> that'll screw me up. So I can actually push a button right here where you felt it go. Normally I go like this uh -huh. and it vanishes, but if I do that, then I do this. <laughs> it gets stuck behind the magnet. So I can hold like forks and spoons and knives and all kinds of stuff there too. That's so cool. How'd you get interested or started in this? Um, magic 14 years ago from Chris Angel's Mind Freak. What's up, Chris? And uh, <laughs> then the cyborg stuff started about two and a half years ago. My daughter came up to me and showed me this girl who could unlock her computer with the chip that she had in her hand. I thought it was so cool. 
And I said, I want one. So I got a hold of Dangerous Things and they sent me a chip and I put it in and then I started finding out where I could get the chips on my own a lot cheaper and I just kept putting them in and using them for different things. And the magnets kept getting bigger. Once I found a guy who was willing to put them in me and has a good coating that I didn't reject. So yeah, wow. now I'm just going crazy with all this stuff. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the last hours of the Cyborg and Transhumanist Forum. So I'm here with our guests Anastasia Sin and Ryan Starr. Uh, I suppose I will begin by asking you about your impressions of the forum thus far. Uh, how do you think it's going? Uh, what do you think we've been able to communicate? That's a good question. I mean, it hasn't been that outright negative or anything. It's just a lot of curiosity and not a lot of follow-up questions. So they're hearing what we have to say um, and there hasn't too much pushback for it. So. <laughs> yes, we are not being picketed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are definitely listening to what we have to say. They seem really interested in the technology and some people even want microchips. Yes, indeed. Now, I'm curious with regard to say 10 years ago or 20 years ago when you were anticipating the future of technology, did you think that these issues would come up for public discussion around this time, around the year 2019, or did this surprise you by happening earlier than you expected or later than you expected? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. I see why it's being brought up now. Um, and it, previous decades, you know, I, I'm not surprised it wasn't brought up then. As far as now versus the future, I, I think it makes sense. In terms of looking back 10 years or 20 years ago, would you have expected this kind of public discussion to occur now? Personally, no. Um, I didn't think it would come up now. I think it's a little early. I think I expected more Johnny Mnemonic style <laughs> technology before people started freaking out about the black shakes, you know, which is a reference to Johnny Mnemonic. Um, you know, we need to basically uh, ignore it right now and let the technology advance before we can make any laws. And I think people are starting to sort of see that. They just were talking about how they passed something on blockchain without completely understanding blockchain. So. I mean, they're, they're doing a very light law, a very, I, I don't even know what to say, like, how did, how did she describe it to us? It was, well, it, it's just strange. It's strange to see people making policy on something that they don't understand. Yeah. So they already did it with blockchain and just sort of went, oh, well, well, we'll just go back to it. So that's a little nerve wracking. Um, we're pretty confident they're not going to do that with this microchipping bill. They're just making it so you can't be forced to do that. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, indeed. Well, uh, certainly your testimony has influenced the discussion. We've had a lot of people come up and say that it changed their minds about... Everybody loves magic. That was easy. <laughs> it, magic is... It's because it's magic. You know, people are interested in like, oh, that's cool. Everyone wants to know how a magic trick is done. So, yeah, it was a, a no-brainer that it would definitely entice people into being a little less afraid of it. So. Yes. And we've had some conversations about how popular culture and science fiction and portrayals of technology and literature and films affect public perception. So on the one hand, uh, we have talked about Star Trek and how Star Trek allowed people to envision certain technologies, uh, for instance, smartphones. On the other hand, we have various dystopian portrayals of technology, including this fear of an all-encompassing totalitarian surveillance state that would use various technologies to track people against their will. I think a lot of individuals are reacting against that, and they don't want that scenario to come to pass, but they are... I don't believe it's going to happen with chips, though, right. do you? I mean, no. it's facial recognition. That's what we really need to be looking at. <laughs> cameras all over the place. Right. That's what cities have already started implementing, so... Right. Well, San Francisco just you know, started the groundwork to ban facial recognition. I heard that. I heard that. So, I mean, the technology, there are people that understand the technology out there trying to 
to make rules to make it safer for people. I think before they can ban the chips, they really need to understand. As it should be with any legislation, exactly. yeah. it shouldn't ban something if you don't know what it is. 100%. Indeed. Well, thank you very much for your thoughts today, and we look forward to a successful conclusion to the forum. There's a community within the Mormon Church that's also like vehemently transhumanist. The Mormon Transhumanist Association. Yeah, I mean, I've never, I stay as far away from religion as I possibly can, but you know, various churches have interactions with transhumanism. I, I don't understand the. Uh, the freak out. I mean, I, I, I know where it's coming from, and it's going to take religious leaders right. convincing people. <laughs> well, I think it's not even so much the theology of a particular religion, it's the lack of familiarity with these technologies, and the fact that most religions lag behind the general culture by about 30 yeah. to 40 years. So they're governments for right. that matter. <laughs> They're inherently more conservative institutions, mm -hmm. and they try to use the theology to justify an earlier societal and cultural configuration, but what yeah. that configuration is shifts with the times as well, and some religious denominations are more open to progress than others. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Ryan, could you demonstrate to us how you could use your microchip to uh, open up your phone camera? Sure. So, I mean... I've used a program, if I can find the thing, you, know, you use a program to write the tag, it's in my hand. One of the things I have a problem with clearly is finding the right app when I need it instead of sifting through a bunch of stuff, so I programmed it to open up the one that I use the most, which is my, you know, the open camera app. Interesting. So you just... Yeah. Once you figure out and you learn where it's positioned in everything in the hand and where the antenna is in the back of the phone, it uh, becomes pretty quick to get what you're trying to do. Well, that's definitely quite a useful application to <laughs> put a microchip to. Yeah, hopefully others agree as well. <laughs> Indeed. Anastasia, there has been an argument made by the proponents of Assembly Bill 226 that these microchip implants are dangerous because they allegedly can cause cancer in humans and animals. What do you have to say about that? Well, I have to say that that is not true and that sounds like an urban legend to me. Uh, animal tags have been used for the past 35 years in our cats and dogs. They have not migrated in our cats and dogs. They have not caused cancers or tumors. None of that has been proven because it hasn't happened. So I'm quite confident that of uh, the 16 chips that I have, I will not be getting any cancers from them. And I've tested them for lead, and they're perfectly safe. That is very good to hear. Full disclosure, by the way, I have two cats. Both of them have little microchips in them that just uh, are able to give basic identifying information about them. So should they and ever get lost? find them when they get lost by just saying, where's my cat? Right. <laughs> exactly. It's not like find your phone. Yes. So I hope a lot of our viewers will be reassured by your explanation. I hope so too. Thank you. So